everyone, it's Maki here. Today I'm going to discuss the content of the movie Gundam Seed Freedom, which contains spoilers. If you want to watch the movie without prior information, I recommend skipping this episode. Let's talk about the details of the characters in the movie. Director Mitsuo Fukuda has been talking about the content of the work in X. He's been actively releasing information to hype up the movie. The box office results in Japan are promising, with an official announcement on February 9 revealing that 1,300,000 tickets have been sold. In addition, fan merchandise is selling out at various theaters. It's likely that the revenue will exceed the number of tickets sold. The special edition model kits sold in theaters will be available later on Premium Bandai. This means that those who couldn't buy them at the theater will have a chance to get their hands on them. Given the success, I really hope that the movie will be released in many countries and regions. I want to share good times with as many people as possible. In my program, I analyze the appeal of the Gundam series from various perspectives. Please be sure to click the subscribe button to discover many fun aspects. Let's check out Mr. Fukuto's comments on the movie. First of all, about the remote control of Infinite Justice Gundam Type 2. It seems that Miss Kotuno Mitsuishi, the voice actress for Maru Ramirez, was questioned by Mr. Fukuda. Today, I was asked a question by Captain Ramirez. The Infinite Justice Gundam Type 2 executed a strategy that had been planned in advance by Kakali Mei Rin and Afran. A program was prepared to switch control when the opponent's name was read. Afran imagined Kakali's sexy figure while calling her name to switch control without the opponent noticing. It's presented as a gag, but it's an excellent tactic. Photos of the script reflecting the director's idea were also released. Kakali, her face turning red, shouts Afran. It was revealed that she called his name, not only to hide her embarrassment, but also to switch control. Multiple meanings are embedded in a single scene. In the final battle, Orb is the target of the Foundation's attack. Ofi, noticing that Kira Yamato and others are in the battleship Millennium, declares Orb will be attacked by Requiem in 10 minutes. The movie shows scenes of Orb's citizens carrying out large-scale evacuations. It seems impossible to perform such evacuation actions in only 10 minutes. What was happening? An explanation is also given. The evacuation of Orb's citizens was underway long before Orb's declaration. The decks of the battleships were loaded with buses for evacuees. Precautions had been taken to evacuate in advance in case of an emergency. This has to do with how beloved Kakali is by the citizens. Such a large-scale evacuation wouldn't have been possible if administrative tasks such as providing information had been done just in time. When asked why Kakali is so overwhelmingly supported by the people, comments were released. Her father was a leader with tremendous support and accomplishments. Kakali fought the Zark forces in the desert with her bare hands. In two major wars, Kakali fought on the front lines aboard a mobile suit. In both wars, Orb managed to avoid occupation by other countries. She also saved Earth and humanity from crisis. It became widely known among the citizens that you know all now. Seiran was in a cooperative relationship with Logos. The popularity of the national military among the citizens is at its peak. Surely it would become the subject of various dramas 
and movies in popular culture, the requirements for a person to marry Kagali would be extremely high. Only a person the citizens could trust would be welcomed. Kakali herself has boarded the mobile suit to fight on the front lines to protect the citizens and has a record of protecting them from occupation. In the novel version, Chairman Duano says the only politicians who can stand up to me are Kakali and Lars. This part portrays Kakali's suitability as a leader. Support for freedom is also expected to be quite strong. After all, it was Freedom Gunnam that saved Kakali from being incorporated into logos. Kira and Lars' home is very luxurious. Comments have also been posted about their home. Let me talk about Kira and Lars' house. The bedroom is on the second floor, which has an open floor plan. The bedroom has a large double bed. To ensure strict security, the house is located in an extremely high area in the center of the plant. The design of this house incorporates crucial elements for dramatic purposes. It reflects the feelings of Hero and Lars. I instructed the designers to stick to the concept of daringly to create something that doesn't suit their hearts. A comfortable life for the two is the house they lived in after the battles in the CTV Ani. Kira and Lars seem to prefer a quiet life in a house near the sea rather than a luxurious one. And in the climax of the movie, there is a scene where Kira and Lars share a kiss on the beach. What's important to them might be living peacefully with the one they love, not a luxurious and big house. Mr. Fukuda also commented on the house. The windows can be made opaque to prevent visibility from the outside. All functions can be controlled by electricity and digital devices. Hollow is the terminal for operations. The bicycle is an idea of myself and the Honda company. As coordinators, they can easily handle heavy bikes. The number of the bike was left to the designer. Also, the car they drove in Nob is the same one as Ren drove in Sea Destiny. The car belongs to Kagali. The photo on Kira's desk was redrawn by Hisoshi Hiroi, the character designer. He drew it so that it could withstand being enlarged for viewing. Personally, I think it would be good to make postcards or other merchandise. A lot of technology and passion goes into even the smallest elements. Those who love bicycles should pay attention to the one in Kiro and Law's house. There is also an interesting story about the food Law's made. Thank you for watching the movie. Here's some information from the production site. Lars cooking includes Kira's favorite foods. The menu was carefully specified and produced. In an earlier scene, Lars is shouted at by the chairman of France Defense Committee. Ignoring his words, Lars told about cooking. There's a reason she makes so much. It's a little revenge for Kiro, who doesn't pay much attention to her. It seems to be a scene showing Lars' playful side. The chairman of Plant's defense committee is an important character in the movie, but it seems he was ignored. The voice actress for Lars, Rita Noko listed the menu. Mr. Fukuta added some information. Kira works on a spaceship, so he has a strictly controlled diet. Lars is considerate of him, and she made sure to prepare generous amounts of his favorite food so that he can freely eat whatever he likes at home. In the scenes depicted in the movie, Lars would wait for Kira to come home without eating so that they could eat together. The leftover food was used for picnics and the like when they went out together. 
comments about new love flavor have also been released. There are some parts in the movie that might be a little hard to understand just from the presentation. New Love Flavor is on a secret mission from Kakali. He goes into space a little earlier than Kira and the others, separately using a container equipped with Mirage Cold Stealth functionality. Therefore, he is not present in the scene where Kira and Dothran fight. Kakali has anticipated the Foundation's actions and given instructions accordingly. She is probably executing military strategies in consultation with Athran. Indeed, I was surprised when I watched the movie with this comment in mind. The audience's attention is drawn to the protagonists Kira and Athran during their fight and the portrayal of Kira's emotions. I had forgotten that Mullah Flavga was not present in the scene. I was also moved by Kakali's action based on her prediction of future events. During the production of the movie, Mr. Fukudo mentioned there was showing seat freedom. This statement seems to refer to Athran boarding the Zugok. However, predicting moves two to three steps ahead and commanding strategies is something Shara's neighbor himself talked about in the TV Annie. Kakali is also the Shara's naval reborn in the sea there. There was a scene where Griffin and his team, trying to read Shin's mind, were frightened by the illusion of Stella. It's the scene where Stella appears and attacks Griffin and his team, taking the form of a terrifying monster. This scene seems to be inspired by the original Ganon, where Anna Ophasis does Mazobi's grudge and imagines a terrifying demonic figure. Information about Lara's crime has also been published. February 5th is Lara's birthday, and a special stage greeting to commemorate her birthday was held at the theater. Several pieces of information were revealed through Mr. Fukuto's comments at this event. Ophi Lan Tao shares the same birthday as Lars, February 5th. This is because Lars and Dolphy were born with the same serial number. It was mentioned in the movie that Lars was created by Or as an accord. And even though Lars and Dolphy have the same birthday, it is stated that they are not related by blood. Lars and Kira, both first-generation coordinators, are able to have children. This is a somewhat surprising hiring. A being born to first-generation coordinator parents is a second-generation coordinator. Lars' father Seagull Klein is a coordinator. There is much mystery surrounding Lars' mother. If Lars' mother was a coordinator, then Lars born to Seagull should be a second generation coordinator. It's possible that Seagull and Lars are not related by blood. Establishing a good parent-child relationship without blood relation is the same as with Kira. It was also revealed that the engagement of Astran and Lars was decided because of their genetic compatibility for having children. I thought it was just arranged for political reasons, so it was surprising to learn that there was compatibility for having children. In addition, a past incident known as the Freedom Hijacking Incident is mentioned by Kakali in the film. Fans hope that the sequel or something similar will be produced. The Freedom Hijacking Incident is likely to be released as an anime rather than a movie. A script for its release as an anime has already been completed in the past. It's interesting that the story is already finished. It will depict the events leading up to Agnes Bourne tearing to join Compass in the Freedom Hijacking Incident. In addition, it is said that the process of Shina recovering from the grief of the post-war period and regaining her cheerful personality will be depicted. 
This is also very intriguing. Let's look forward to new information. See you in the next episode.